Awesome. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this session for uh, DevWorld here at RMIT. My name's Gavin. You'll notice that there are two names on the slide. Uh, my co-presenter, Sande, will be helping me out today. Originally, we were going to do this thing where I would pretend that Sande wasn't able to make it here today. I would pretend that you know he's sick or something. And then I'd have to ask for a volunteer from this group. And then I would coincidentally choose Sande. He'd come down here, and then we'd tell you all about it. Uh, we ended up deciding we wouldn't do that because uh, we're, we're mic'd up, so it'd be pretty obvious. Um, that, he, that he's presenting, uh, and so instead we just decided he'd start down here. The reason why I wanted to do that is because it's a, it's a Monday morning, we're recovering from the weekend and the workshops yesterday, we came out, of a, uh, I came out of a keynote and we're kind of really switched on. And our talk's about architecture, don't get me wrong, but we have a good number of talks uh, about architecture at DevWorld, we have a really great lineup, we have uh, uh, a talk about MVP by Sam, and we have a talk about Viper, from a person whose name I can't remember at the moment. Um, but we have a lot of that, those kinds of talks. In contrast to that, even though ours is entitled The State of MVC, our talk is a bit more about the communication that goes behind an architecture. Because everybody, um, or everybody who's an iOS developer, uh, uses MVC at one stage of their career, or as, just as students. And then eventually, we find out, oh, maybe that's not the best architecture for the kind of work that we want to do. So we learn about architectural patterns like MVVM, like Viper, and then a bountiful number of other architectures that have some five-letter acronym. So what we wanted to talk about was architecture from a team perspective. Uh, let's see. Having said all of that, you have heard absolutely nothing about me. My name's Gavin. I'm an iOS developer with REA, where our mission is to reinvent, reimagine, and recreate the way the world experiences property. Uh, I graduated from here, actually. I graduated RMIT at the end of last year, um, and I've been an iOS developer for uh, just leading on about two and a half years or so now. Um, I've loved it so far. I can imagine that there's a great road ahead, so I can't imagine myself doing anything else. Anyway, Sunday. Uh, hey, guys. My name is Sunday. Uh, you pronounce it like the day, Sunday. Um, and I'm currently working part-time at Vent. It's a social networking app where you <coughs> vent out your feelings. Um, and uh, you can check it out at ven.co if you're not familiar with it. Uh, and for the rest of my time, I'm currently pursuing my master's degree in human computer interaction at University of Melbourne. Um, and I've been an iOS developer for three and a half years. And yeah, previously I was working with Gavin at REA. Yeah. Uh, we have a bit of a rapport going actually because we used to work together both at our previous company and the company before. So we were just chilling for lunch uh, this last weekend. Uh, and you know, I live, in, I live in an apartment in the city. We're not allowed to have pets, uh, but I'm, I'm quite the dog person. You know, we have all these cat uh, pictures going around the internet, but I'm more about my dogs. This last weekend, Sunday and I were thought, you know what, okay, let's write a really small app that'll allow us to take a look at dog pictures from the internet or something like that. Will we be able to show everyone the app? Yeah, let's do it. So let me bring up the simulator. There you go, okay. Uh, so this is our app. So our app has three main features, um, which, rep which is represented by the three tabs. So the first one is Much Find, which is where we discover new pictures of dogs. So we have a collection of dog images here. Um, we scroll down, yeah, all, all, all good. You can tell I really love my Akitas and Shiba Inus. <laughs> yeah, and we, if we tap one of them, um, it shows the uh, detailed screen with, with a full screen image. And there's a button here that says wow. So this button will wow the, the image. Um, <laughs> so when it, it says not, not so what, um, so that's a toggle there. Um, and that leads us to the second tab, which is the wow screen. So this, this is a collection of every dog that you wowed. Um, and, and then we thought, oh, maybe we, need to, we, should, we should add something else if it's just yeah, wowing cool. some, some dogs. And, it wouldn't be too useful. So uh, that's our third tab, uh, which, is, which is the notes tab, where we can add notes to our um, wild dogs. So we can remember why, why we wrote it. So, so um, one example is this first one, not so, not so seen by dog. Um, so to save a note, we just edit it. I'll just change this to, yeah, seen by dog. And we save it, and we go back, and it's there. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's the app. Yeah, 
Well, um, yeah, I mean, our talk is actually about the, the software architecture itself, not so much about developing the features. So we will quickly go through the architecture um, just so that you can have a quick look. Uh, let's pull up Xcode really quickly. Yeah, here we go. So we have the app delegate. Yeah, that's right. Um, I hate to disappoint everybody who loves the interface builder. We thought, you know what, we want to break this out really nice and simple. We don't want to have too many uh, interface builder files lying around or anything like that. So you'll notice that in our application, we just have uh, the application delegate set up at the very top. We set up our main window. We set up our root view controller. And then we create one of these things on the bottom, uh, the much wow controller. You'll notice that uh, inside the, uh, on line 27 and 28, from there on after, we create those view controls that you saw before. We have that discover screen to find the dogs. We have the favorites to uh, take a look at the, all the dogs that really wowed me. And then we have the notes list view controller that you saw at the very end. Um, yeah, that's actually basically the structure of the app. Uh, there are a few things that uh, I thought we might want to add uh, over the weekend. Um, but before, I mentioned, before that, actually, I wanted to mention as well that this, we're going to make this available uh, for everyone to have a quick look at as well, just so that uh, you don't have to remember exactly everything that we show you afterwards. Um, yeah, I, I remember there was one feature that I really wanted to do. Oh, yeah, which one is that? Uh, I was thinking at the end of the weekend that I'd like to be able to take a picture of a dog. Like, my friends have a lot of dogs, and I'd like to be able to take a picture of their dog and have that translated, like, do some magic, image magic, and then translate that into one of those pictures that we saw so that I can discover their dogs inside the app as well, so that I can leave some notes and things like that. Uh, Reckon we can do that? Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Um, but you remember, we talked, we talked about improving our, one of our um, existing features before adding new features? Uh, <laughs> I actually don't remember that. <laughs> um, so <laughs> what, what kind of features do you reckon we can improve? Uh, so remember when, when we showed the um, node screen, um, the save button is always enabled. So users can just tap that button multiple times even though, it, even though they're saving the same node that is already there. Right, I do remember that actually. Um, OK, so what, what, how do you reckon we should do that? So, so I guess the, the button can be disabled when the, uh, when the text that's being displayed is it's already saved. Like it's the same as the, as the um, saved note. Oh, OK, cool. Let's pull that out real quickly. Let's, have a, let's uh, quickly spike that out. Cool. Uh, so I'll pull up that view controller. Mm. Um, it's added notes view controller. Cool. OK. OK. So you were saying before you want it so that if you saved it and the text is the same, we want it so that the save button isn't really enabled. Mm. Um, OK, let's think about our current architecture going on. We've just got our view controllers. We've got our models. I reckon maybe you know we can conform to UI text view delegate. We use a text view inside here. So maybe we can do that. And then when the, as a user types the text, we can probably set some Booleans on the text view. So we can set like, is button enabled? We can set the enabled state of the button. Um, yeah, and then just do something like that. What do you reckon? Yeah, that sounds that it would work. Except that I guess if you have booleans inside mm. the view control, and um, it would it wouldn't be really scalable. Once once we if we if we decided to add more features to it, and we add more booleans or other things in it, mm. I guess it would be a bit bloated, and it becomes a massive view controller. Right. Okay. If that's the case, what what do you reckon we should do here? Like, I mean. There are a lot of different ways that we can go about it if we don't use booleans. What do you reckon? Uh, I think, I think first of all, we should create a, um, a, we should model the state. So I reckon an enum would be good for that. So okay. let's type that in. So this, this enum would be, will represent a UI state. Right, so, I'm not too sure what you mean by that. Could you explain a bit? Yeah, so, so when we first go into the screen and the user is not doing anything, so mm. the screen will be idle. Right. So I guess that would be the, like the no interaction sort of state. Okay. And when the user starts typing in stuff, that would be the editing, editing state. All right, awesome. Yeah, um, how, how'd that look? I'm still trying to get an idea of what you mean exactly. Still yeah. not too sure. So I'll type that in. So, um, no interaction, editing, and a third one might be um, when you type save, it'll be, it will go to the saving state. Ah, OK. So this is kind of like the different scenarios the screen can be in. So for example, since this is the edit, edit notes view controller, this is, these are the different states that the screen is in, like the user flow? Yeah. yeah. Ah, OK, OK. Yeah, exactly like that, yes. Um, OK, so now we have our model. Um, State. Mm -hmm. we have we've modeled our state. Um, I guess hmm, if we if we just put it directly in the view controller, mm -hmm. 
that means it's just replacing our booleans. Yeah, I was thinking that before. I was yeah. wondering what kind of benefits this actually gives us over what we already have. Like, I mean, yeah, if right. I just do that text view delegate work, we'd achieve the same functionality just using booleans. Yeah, that's right. I guess, um, so the view controller should really only handle um, controlling the views, right? Mm. So to control the state, how about we have a state controller? OK. Still not too sure what you mean by that either. Let's let's dive it in. So so we have a state controller, um, and the state controller can be one of uh, a property inside of view controller. Okay. So we we co uh, we compose that in there. Okay. Um, and and things in the view, in the state controller. Um, so we would have the state. I guess it's controlling the state. So okay. so it needs to hold on to that state. Okay. Um, and the second one, I, um, the. The state controller is used to interpret what the, what the state means for, for the view controller. Mm -hmm. So in this case, um, we wanted to tell the view controller whether the save button is enabled or not. Right. So we can have uh, the save button enabled. Ah, oh, doesn't that sort of make this a bit of, like because it's an interpretation layer, doesn't that make this sort of like a view model? Does that mean that we're doing something like that? Yeah, yeah, almost like that, I, I think. Um, except here, I guess, we, we're going to mutate the state all the time as, as, as the state changes. Right, OK. I yeah. see. Yeah. Um, so we have that skeleton there, um, state and state controller. Um, yeah, let me, let me just finish up the code really quickly. Oh, I'm just going to type, type some, some, some stuff. Oh, ooh, there you go. Yeah, that's a uh, implementation there. Okay, um, very nice. Yeah, let me let me, let me uh, go through this. So, so the, in the state, we, we added a new state called saved. Um, I'll talk about uh, why that's uh, needed later. Um, and I'll just add a convenience here, this plate node. Oh, okay. And you you'll notice that um, it has um, an associated value. Uh -huh. um, so the display node is just going to extract that um, associated value. And, and that string is the currently displayed note on the, on the screen. Right, OK. Yeah. Um, and the next bit is the state controller. So we had that, um, the current state. And here we have a custom setter. And that's where the saved um, state is required. So we, we're going to save the currently saved note to it, um, mm -hmm. which is hold on, hold on, hold, uh, held on here. Okay. Um, and that's used in the save button enabled um, Boolean, which is now a computed property. Um, and if it's if the screen is in no interaction editing or saved, we, we compare them and um, enable the the button appropriately. Mm -hmm. And if it's saving, just disable it. Okay, cool. I guess I sort of understand that. So we've separated that uh, the logic for the screen's elements into this thing, and we've defined the different states it can be in. So how how does that look like it'd be implemented? Okay, cool. Um, so you mentioned before text view delegates. I think I think that makes sense. Okay. Let's add that. So I'll I'll add I'll confirm this to um, your text view delegate. Okay. Um, and then at the bottom here, let's let's implement it. Let's implement uh, some delegate methods. Oof. Okay, there you go. Um, so, so here we have. Um, oh, don't, don't, don't worry about the errors now. Okay. Um, so, so we, so we have um, our delegate methods: the begin editing, and editing, and change. Mm -hmm. And in them, we we change the state. So, okay. so for example, in the did begin editing, we we change the current state to editing and put in the, the current text, so text view text. OK. Yeah. And in save notes, um, we, we change it to saving. And, and in the completion, uh, completion closure, we set it to saved. OK. Yeah. And, cool. you, and you, you'll notice that every, um, every time we change the state, we do update UI. Uh, and that looks like that. So we, so we change, here we're just changing the enable state of the save button. I see. To that computer property that we had before. Right, and then this would just change as we add more things into that state controller. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Okay, I think I have a bit of a better idea now. Okay. Yeah. So let's. So you notice that there's an error because the state controller is there, isn't there? Mm -hmm. But we mentioned before that we're going to add this. So let's the, let's add that to here. Um, so the init will, which will change a bit. So let me just. There you go. Okay. Um, so the state controller mm -hmm. is now there. Okay. Um, so we're saving it there, um, and we need to take a reference of the save button because we're changing the enabled state. Okay. Um, and the other things is in the init, we initialize it with the notes that's passed on to this this view controller. So we set it to no interaction because it's in the initializer, um, 
and just um, set the set the some other things. Right. Okay. I think I like that idea. Yeah. Um, how does the uh, what do you think about uh, telling me a bit more about it afterwards, we'll, we'll, so that we can see whether or not we'd like to use it? Yeah, yeah. I think I think this button can be can be used somewhere else. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's let's just run this this uh, quickly so we can see it in action. Um, okay. So go, go to the show notes screen. You can you can see that the save button is disabled. Ah, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And then we change it and it's disabled again. If we put it back, it's the same. Uh, it's disabled again. Okay. And if we put some things in, save, it's disabled. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess at least at, on a feature at a pe uh, excuse me at a feature perspective that looks like it'll work. Um, yeah. I'll have to get my head around the way that we've set it up so that we can repeat that if we're going to do it. Yeah, exactly. All right, awesome, cool. Um, if that's the case, how yeah. about now? Do you reckon it's time to put in uh, that photo feature that I was hoping to put in? Yeah. Mm, yeah, but. Some other thing. So, uh, so <laughs> sorry, Gavin. It's so, okay. so currently everything is instant um, because everything is local. Uh, is, is stored locally. Right. But um, we eventually want to want to integrate with some API. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I, I don't think this this app will um, handle delay very well. Like if there's a delay when we fetch the data. I see. Well, um, if that's the case, then I'll quickly uh, finish off the rest of this one, if you don't mind, um, because I want to I want to have a go at this kind of architecture as well. So, oh, using yeah. that state and that state controller, mm. um, let me just uh, f see if I can get that done myself. Um, let's see. I'll finish that one off really quickly. Yep. Oh, okay. And. Uh, Oh, what? Yes, thank you. I, I'd like to think that I type really fast. <laughs> what, what kind of, what kind of uh, thing do you think that we'd have an issue with if we have that delay? What do you think that the screens would look like? I don't, I don't really understand. So, I guess we would need some sort of loading indicator, right, on okay. the screen okay. while it's while it's loading the data. Ah, this is what you were talking about earlier. As in, inside the view controllers you we were going to add that Boolean state. If we're going to do this loading thing as well, our view controllers would each have to have that loading indicator on the inside? Yeah, exactly. I um, see. Hmm. So, okay. we, so, so we don't really want to put it in there. OK. I think. Yeah. So I guess let's, let's think about that a little bit then. What, mm. what should we do? So I guess the loading indicator can, can live um, somewhere else, not on the view controller, except that I guess in iOS, um, you always need to have a view control displayed all the time. Ah, platforms. Yeah. OK. Mm. So you cannot just have a loading indicator like floating around. OK. Mm -hmm. OK. So I guess um, let's, let's extract that a little bit. I like the mm. ideology that you were talking about before. We want to keep our view controllers only handling the views. Yeah. Um, if that's the case, how about with the Discover screen, we only, if we don't want the loading inside the Discover screen, I guess that means that with the Discover screen, we only want to see the screen when we have the data, so that it doesn't have to do with it doesn't have anything to do with that loading. It doesn't have anything to do with the network. Ah, so you're saying that the the Discover View Controller will only be ready once the data is ready. We only create it when the data is ready. I think so. I think yeah. that sounds about right. Yeah, what do you reckon? Sense. Yeah. Sense. Okay. Um, so I, then mm -hmm. the the loading would happen um, elsewhere. Okay. I think that we've broken it down. Then we have that Discover. Mm. Business, and then we need to show something beforehand when we're uh, loading. But we need something to coordinate all of those things because we do need a view controller on the screen. Yep. How do we show that one view controller? I guess I can make a container of, of some sort. Yeah, right. Um, if that's the case, I'll give that a quick go. Okay. Uh, should we call it like con container view controller? Okay. Uh, let's see. Over here. Um, let's see. All right, cool. Oh, How about control. that? Yeah, cool. OK. Oh, you implemented that very quickly. Thanks. Uh, I type out about a thousand <laughs> words a second. So <laughs> cool. So, so let's see what's in that. Yeah, OK. So this, this class over here that has one, a single piece of API that's made available to the rest of our application. We make sure that we display view controllers, and then the rest are just functions that make sure we do that. So removing the current view controller and then displaying the new view controller. Um, so hopefully that one will act as the one that we need to always show on the screen. So we're always showing the container. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to have the discover. Now before that, we need to have something to show the loading indicator. 
Um, so I'll give that a go really quickly. Yeah, some sort of loading view controller. OK, I'll give that a go. Mm. Yeah. All right, here we go. Oh, cool. Awesome. Um, so what's in here? Uh, let's see. This one's pretty straightforward as well, actually. I uh, opted to use view did load instead of load view, but what I've done is create a UI activity indicator view and then just put it inside the view controller. Um, I've added it and then set it up just so that it uh, shows in the center of the screen. Um, yeah, so I guess that, that tackles those problems. So we have the discover view controller only when we have the images of the docs. Mm -hmm. We have the loading bit. Um, we've solved the issue of the container view controller. What I still don't really see how that all kind of pieces together. Yeah. So, so something else needs to um, needs to manage all that. So, uh, I guess some sort of coordinator object. Right. Okay. Okay. I did. I did read about that somewhere. Mm. Um, how do you think that fits into our app, though? I feel like there was a lot inside that piece there. There's a lot of architecture if we were going to do that. Uh, how about we break it down to something simpler? What do you reckon we should do? Hmm. I don't really see how that um, what fits into our architecture. Uh, what do we need, actually? So I guess we should define um, a controller. Right. Some sort of controller. Mm -hmm. mm. I think so, so. We need the view controller from inside there, don't we? We need that container view controller. Yeah, we need that view controller. Okay, mm -hmm. and then otherwise we need to be able to say load the content on the inside. Yeah, right. Yeah. All yeah. right. Um, so the view controller and the load content uh, function. So this is to abstract the discover, the favorites, and the notes. Yeah. So I guess in that sense, it has to do with our user features. It has to do with our use cases. Um, all right. Let me see. What do you think about this use cases? Use a view controller. Okay, perfect. So we have the the uh, view controller. Okay. This way. Yep. And then look on that, as we said. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I think that's okay. Yeah. Um, how about we try and spike that one out really quickly inside the app, and then you let me know what you think as we go. Cool. Yeah. Let's do it for the first tab, the discover view controller. All right. Yeah. Cool. I've cleaned up our application delegate a little bit. You'll notice that um, we just create the much wow controller now, uh, and then inside there, uh, much wow controller. Into here. I've cleaned this one up a little bit as well. Beforehand, um, we had those view controllers display, like the discover one, the one for favorites, mm -hmm. and the one for notes. Uh, I've cleaned it up a little bit because uh, I knew we'd have to restructure it a little bit. Um, I guess that means now we want, uh, instead of an array of UI view controllers to show inside our tab controllers, we want the user flow controllers yep. inside here. We want the view controllers to show as well. Um, and I guess we can compute that by mapping over the controllers and getting the view controller from the inside of them. Uh, that means that I'd have to change this. Yep, to the to view controllers. All right, awesome. awesome. And it'd still build because we're going to because this one's just simply an array. Yeah. So All right. currently, there's nothing displayed on the screen. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Uh, let me give. It, let me have a go at doing that on the inside of the discover screen then. So. Uh, our folder structure, let's go into the application, inside the various features that we've got. I'll add a new file to discover, and I'll call it, uh, let's see here, the so discover, discover controller. controller. I'm glad that we're on the same page with that. Yeah. Cool. Um, let's see. So inside here, I'm going to have this class, the discover controller. Uh, it's going to be one of these things. And from inside there, I need this view controller, and then as well as that, the function to load the oops, the function to load the content. Yeah. All right, awesome. Uh, let's see. How should I implement that real quickly? Ah, actually, before that, uh, I don't have access to a UI view controller inside here uh, because you're not importing UI kit. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So let me just quickly. Oh, well, import UI kit, and uh, yeah, the rest of it's done as well. <laughs> oh, okay, cool, awesome. So I've changed oh, that up really quickly. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. Appreciate that. Um, we're by importing UI kit up the top, uh, my discover controller is now simply uh, this thing that manages all the dependencies, I thought, because we needed to get all of those repositories on the inside. Uh, I initialize it as per any other object. Uh, we were saying that as part of our view controllers, we needed that container view controller. We needed to wrap that inside a navigation controller to show the thing, the uh, complete screen still. We do the rest of the setup. And then that's pretty straightforward on the bottom. It's just some object initialization. And then here, we make sure we load the content by displaying that loading while it's doing that. Ah, uh, yeah. And then calling this callback to create the discover view controller once we have those images, and then displaying it. 
Cool. So that's that functionality. Do you like the way that that's set up though? I know that this changes the way we would have had to have structured each of the features from here on out. What mm. do you think about the work that we have to do on top? Um, I, think that, I think that's all right. All so right. Um, we, can, we can apply this to, to the other um, tabs. Okay. The controllers. I'll give that a go afterwards then. Yeah. Um, let's see really quickly. I'll add that into here so that this changes a little bit um, inside the much well controller. I'll change that here so that we need that discover controller. And then I'll initialize one of these. Uh, what did we call this here? The image repository. All right. And actually, now that you mention it, with the way that we've set up the application, this much about control is pretty much the same thing. It controls the flow of the entire app. So yeah, that's right. So we, we actually already used that button before. OK. Yeah. I'll quickly change that up really quick. Mm -hmm. um, and implement this load content. So when we want to show the application, we want to tell it to load as well. And the way we load it is by telling the currently selected tab, the currently selected tab to load. So I'll access the tab, the controller that's available inside there and then load it. Does it sound about right? Yeah. Yeah. OK. Um, if that's the case, I'll just make sure I activate that inside here too. And then tell it to load. All right, let's have a look at that. Cool. Oh. oh, perfect. OK, awesome. Um, that was that, just that learning bit, wasn't it? Yeah, so, so, so we saw the loading indicator for, for this bit there. OK. Um, yeah, and we have that one tap. All right, awesome. If that's the case, um, how about we spike out the rest of it for the rest of the application, and then we'll see about spreading that idea with the rest of the team. Yeah, cool. Sounds yeah, good. I feel like we'll have to pull in somebody else to help us out afterwards, because uh, I really want that feature done. Yeah, OK, Gavin. Thank you. We'll All have right. your, we have your photo feature too. All right, awesome. Um, OK, cool. So that's that done. Uh, how about we get started on that feature now? What do you reckon? Uh, yeah, about that, Gavin. I think we are almost out of time, so. Ah, that's true. We, yeah, yeah. next time. I forgot we have this dev world thing to get to, too. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We need to go to dev world. Right. OK. Well, hi, everyone, again. That's how we feel development happens inside a team. Admittedly, in this case, there were just two of us, so the communication was really quick. We could really spike out something really quickly, see whether or not we like it, and then implement it inside our application. That also meant that we could um, actually we can run the app again really quickly just to show the end result. Ah, uh, yep. Um, but we, that meant that we could spike out something really quickly. And then that means that we can spread this architecture just amongst the two of us, and then get that done, get that documented, and get something out there. We understand that on a team that's a lot larger, so for example, teams of 10, 12, uh, 40, where you have lots of different tribes and lots of different squads, and everyone's trying to work together on the same product, that this kind of thing doesn't just take 30 minutes. It might, take, it might be a bit more on the scale of a couple of weeks or a month. In fact, you might have a lot of different meetings to do that sort of thing. But one of the key things that we felt uh, that we used here were, was the rapport between us as developers. The idea behind that is we didn't sit on a single particular architecture. We didn't decide, OK, you know what, we're going to use uh, this pattern or that pattern. Um, we did, what we did do was use existing architectural patterns that the community knows about. So we did use the concept behind MVVM. We did use some other concepts around extraction and come up with something that isn't necessarily the same. It is quite similar, but something that we understand and that we are making sure that we uh, keep, keep across. So we make sure that we both understand the ideas. And the idea behind that is, you know, every, a lot of teams out there will decide we use this particular architecture. At the very start of a project, we're going to stick to this. We're going to use Viper. But then at that point in time, we fall into two different traps that I feel like I was going to fall in when uh, we were creating this application as well. What might have happened is that we end up, for example, if we implement the application using MVVM, we shove everything into the view model. And as uh, one of the developers that I, I speak to, uh, that I used to speak with a lot, says, if we use MVVM and we just move all that stuff out of the view controller, we end up with a massive view model anyway. I absolutely hate MVVM. And I remember he said that with a really, um, really, uh, with a really frustrated face. On the other end of the spectrum, you might decide, okay, you know what? Let's use an architecture like Viper. 
And then you might find one of two things. That one, you end up creating all of this boilerplate, you end up creating all of these different files that you don't actually need, just for the sake of filling out this template. Alternatively, you'll find that because your team's understanding is a little different to what the actual or what the architecture was meant to represent, that you have these names, the interactor, the presenter, the entities and the repositories, for example, and then you have the routers as well. Um, you find that even though you have those files, your team doesn't truly understand what it means for your team to use those and to hook them up. So you have a lot of concerns between your objects being misplaced. You have them leak into one another, and so the idea of using the software architecture in the first place falls to moot. Instead, in contrast here, the idea is that we didn't... It's not to say that we've come up with a particular architecture. By no means does it mean that we did that. What we did instead was talk a bit more about how we want to implement our particular features, what kind of requirements that we have, think about how it is that we'll implement it, and then figure out, using our knowledge of our existing architectures, what kinds of things do we actually want to introduce. We, would, uh, we think that having state might be great inside our view controllers. We think that having a con separate controller for that might be great. And that's so that we don't have to compose, uh, so that we can compose our view controllers of different pieces of functionality, rather than subclassing something and inheriting all of that functionality. There's a lot of that stuff, and I, can, I analogize it to using frameworks. When you decide on using a framework, you might say, oh, you know what, we only really want this small piece of this framework. How about we just write it ourselves? Or we're going to use this entire reactive paradigm. I want to take that entire thing, but I actually really only want to use these pieces of functionality. At that point in time, you might not choose to use those frameworks. You might decide, oh, well, if that's the case, I might just forego using that piece of functionality altogether. If we have that kind of mentality for frameworks, we thought, why don't we have that kind of mentality when it comes to software architecture? When it comes to de creating and designing scalable software design, why is it we don't have that kind of thought? And oftentimes, that's because it comes to team communication. So if what we wanted to really talk about today was all of that put together. We wanted to mention that software architecture is something that we feel evolves over time amongst your teams. It'll be different from one team to the next. And rather than picking a particular architecture, making sure that your architecture is able to adapt, making sure that your architecture is constantly evolving, that you create an evolutionary architecture. And uh, I found this out yesterday, actually, and I use the word evolutionary because there was a book written by ThoughtWorks, yeah. ThoughtWorks that talks about that exact same concept. And the idea is to all constantly be thinking about how it is that you structure your application and how your teams work together. That's it from us. Um, we wanted to leave a bit of time at the end, just in case there was uh, just as a bit of a buffer, and as well as that, in case uh, there were any questions that we'd like to open to. Thank you very much. Um, Sandy, did you have anything to finish up with, actually? No. Yeah, no? All right. Cool. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, and we hope you have a great dev world.